Hi everybody Hello. and welcome to our YouTube channel. It's Easter 2020 and this year we decided that we are doing it podcast style, aren't we? Yes. But before we start, oh yeah. uh, before we start with our podcast, yes, exactly. We need to get those formalities done with. Yeah. So? so if you like the video, put your thumb up. If you don't like it, put it down and remember to subscribe and put on your notifications because then it will say like a ding and you have a message. And you, what are like a new video out there. Or what something. Arne means is when you turn on your notifications, <laughs> you will never miss a single episode that we post as you will be notified immediately. Yeah. So Arne, this year's project for Easter is this gorgeous blanket in uh, Merino. And I hope everybody can finish it until summer. Yeah. A couple of years ago, summer. a couple of years ago, we posted uh, a blanket, uh, or actually, we showed a blanket or two on our live stream, and everybody was so excited about those blankets and wanted them done, and they wanted the patterns, and they kept asking us for the patterns. Last year, we posted a pattern of Hedwig, uh, which was uh, a big success, and this year we are posting the pattern for this blanket, which we are calling Astrid. A new so, flower. A new flower. This is Astrid, the blanket for 2020. We are going to be crocheting this podcast style. You're only going to see our hands as we do this, and we are going to tell you loads of fun stories of what we've been up to in the past months. That sounds like a plan. Yeah, so yeah. stay tuned and uh, <laughs> let's start crocheting let's this start beauty. Crocheting. Well, we have one, we have to make another one. Let's start crocheting a new one then. Yes. Okay, so uh, we're going to be starting the crochet flower. Yes. How many colors for uh, each flower? Three for each flower. Ah, very cool. And I, today I'm making a flower that's not in the blanket because I just grabbed what I had. Oh, okay. Because I have finished this one, so maybe this is a new one. This is a you new never one. know; it can be a new one. So, uh, is there a system to your to the blanket? Is I there... think there was like eighteen color combinations in this one. So, eighteen it's... different. You mean eighteen different color combinations? So, each flower three colors, and then you have eighteen. Eighteen times. Eighteen different variants of those yeah. three colors. If I remember correctly, but that's written in the pattern. Oh, okay. And is it then put together in a special way? Yeah, that's also in the pattern. Oh, perfect. So everybody gets <laughs> all those things uh, in the pattern, Yeah, which is great. Because I think I have more than enough trying to focus on crocheting this. Mm -hmm. So I can't think too much. No, okay, I'll let you... But I'll... you have to explain something, Carlos. I have to explain a few things. So the There first... was there were a lot of strange things happening. Yeah, the first thing I want to explain very quickly is that this is not a tutorial. Uh, if you just tuned in, and if you believe this is a tutorial, it's not. This is our regular podcast, uh, which is kind of knitting and crochet radio. So we're doing this and we're talking uh, radio style about all these different things. And mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, Arne is crocheting the flower. Yeah, okay? I try not to make mistakes. However, we will more than likely do a tutorial at some point uh, on the flower to show, I don't know, how to crochet the petal or something. Maybe, maybe well, not. I'm doing Depends. that now. Oh yeah, you are. Yeah, okay. They, but so a kind of a, a little <laughs> bit of a tutorial, but it's not. And, really and I'm a tutorial. crocheting slow. You see, I'm not. You are. Yeah. Okay. I'm not as quick as I was when I was younger. So no tutorial. So this is. Uh, so no tutorial, but maybe a little bit of a tutorial. So that was the first thing uh, we wanted to mention. Uh, second thing we wanted to mention is that uh, the introduction to this video was recorded before Easter. Yeah. Uh, and we were actually supposed to show this episode during Easter. However, during Easter, I was uh, recovering from uh, Corona. I have been, uh, I was infected. I tested positive for, for COVID-19 and uh, I had no energy to do this in Easter. Uh, and therefore, uh, the introduction of the video says, uh, this is our Easter podcast, and it is. It's just it, that- It was supposed to be. It, it is the Easter podcast. It's just one week late. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not going to talk too much about uh, my corona illness today, uh, but we plan on resuming uh, our uh, quarantine knitting podcasts from next week on Wednesday. Yeah, because we started this knit along and we had to stop it because yeah. 
we were too weak. Actually, you were too weak mm-hmm. to sit and I had talk with the corona. Yes. So, but we'll talk about and explain uh, everything that I've been going through uh, when we start up our quarantine podcasts, which we plan on doing on Wednesday. April 22nd, 2020. Yeah, if you see this one in 2035, then it's too it's late. Too late. <laughs> well, you can still yeah. see it. But. Uh, the only little thing I want to I wanna say about uh, my current condition is that I am now uh, healthy. I'm back in, uh, in good health. Uh, but I am suffering from something called post-viral syndrome, which means that my energy level is very low. And I get very tired very quickly. And I do spend a lot of extra time sleeping. So I may not have, you know, the energy to be with you all throughout this podcast. Oh, <laughs> you have to be here. But I'm going to do my best <laughs> uh, and try to do it. So it was a very strange Easter with all the sickness. There were like no people around because we, like where we live, there's a lot of cottages and there's always a lot of people during Easter. Yeah. But this year, it has been very quiet. Incredibly quiet. Around our house. And we haven't been skiing either because there hasn't been like, first of all, you couldn't hardly walk. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was true. afraid of... Meeting people because yeah. if you are, I went out with the do- with Freya, I could end up meeting people, and yeah. that is, I wasn't allowed to meet people. So it, it feels like we've been in some sort of a prison. Because, yeah, for a month. Because we left the boat, uh, the Coastal Express, on April four. Oh, sorry, March fourteenth, and we started our quarantine on March fifteenth, which was done voluntarily. Yeah. Uh, and then I got very ill on March 26th. At first I got the, the cough. Yeah. And, and, then, and then I got ill six days later on March 26th. So. Mm-hmm. But then I, the doctor said I didn't have the virus. But I probably had it mm-hmm. since you had it. Yeah, anyway. Okay. So, so, we got that, so when our quarantine finished, I got the virus. And, so I had to, and then we had to stay in isolation for another 14 days. So today... We record, we're recording this podcast. We uh, we're recording this podcast uh, a few days before it's aired. So today is Thursday, uh, the eighteenth of April, and today is actually the first day that we can officially leave the house uh, with do- doctor's permission. We can go out and be with people, and not too close to people, but we can be there. So once we finish this podcast, once we finish this podcast, I'm going to do something I haven't done in a month. <laughs> that's to put on a pair of jeans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're going out shopping. <laughs> what are we going to get, Arne? Do you have a list? No, I'm going to buy a new jigsaw puzzle because I'm hooked on it now because I just finished yeah. one. Well, I tried helping you, but my post-viral syndrome was not. <laughs> you, you, it wasn't much help. So I have to, I'm going to buy a new puzzle. Mm. And so, well, it's kind of nice in between the work to go down and place some So what pieces. would happen when, when we were doing, well, we, when Arne was doing the puzzle was, come on, Carlos, come and do a little bit of the puzzle. And then I go and I'd look at the pieces and get really dizzy. I get really dizzy because there were so many pieces on the table. And I'd say, okay. And then I tried looking for some, you know, kind of color coordinating them. And after 20 minutes, I was so tired of doing that, that I just had to go lie on the sofa. And then as Arnhem started progressing and making more and more of the puzzle, I'd come in, you know, if, if, if he wasn't here and I'd pass by and I'd look. And sometimes I actually find two or three and I'd put them together Mm. for you. And then I was so tired, I had to go back and lie down. So if I buy a new one, you can try that one. Yeah. It's actually nice. It's an, we did it during Christmas also. Yeah, but that, then I was more active. Uh, yeah, but this time you were At This not time, active. I think out of the 1,000 pieces, I could have put together maybe 20 pieces. Yeah. And then the rest you did. But I did it so well. You did, yeah. So what okay, else? but now you were talking about... Uh, you, you promised a tutorial. So now I'm going to do a... I said it wasn't a tutorial, and then you said it was, so it is a tutorial that is not a tutorial. But now I'm going to explain something, so it's kind of a little bit. Okay. Look, 
when I finish the round, I cut the yarn and then I just move on another side of the flower mm -hmm. and then I start crocheting from somewhere else. Yeah. And now when I'm on like halfway around, I have the tail from the first color. So what I'm doing now is I am putting this around, around while I'm crocheting. So and I'm crocheting this one with the yellow. And then once you've reached the, the purple on the opposite side, you just cut it. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Then I just have fewer threads to weave threads in. Threads to weave in. Very clever tip. And so, I, yeah. So to continue. So it's a kind of tutorial <laughs> after all, even though it's not. So this really was the tutorial, tutorial. Today's tutorial. Okay, Arna. So shopping list. We've gonna we're gonna go get a fun jigsaw puzzle. Yep. Thousand pieces, or do you want a challenge? Is there like? Two times we have two thousand. That's what we normally do. Yeah, but do. the question is, do no? We we've, we've only done a thousand pieces. Is it? Oh, let's go for five thousand. Or we something. don't have a table big enough for that. <laughs> maybe they are small. Mm, small pieces. Maybe well, maybe fifteen hundred. How about one thousand five hundred pieces? Yeah, that's also nice. Yeah. So puzzle okay. is on the list. I've just written it down, and then we are getting uh, some stuff for the garden, aren't we? We have to buy the so so so. so Soil? Yeah, soil yeah, because earth. like on on our podcast, the quarantine podcast uh, casts, we said, oh, now we have time to put all the seeds in the, how do you say it in English? Well, so, so, so. so, it's the same as Norwegian. That was hard. And we didn't have much soil in the house and we didn't want to bother our friend carrying all the soil. So yeah, today, who were shopping yeah. for us. so today we're going to buy a lot of soil. Soil, soil, because and we have a lot of tomatoes coming. But is it too late to buy soil now? Or? No, no, it's never too late. So w behind me, you don't see this because you are you can put watching it, put it, Give it to me and then I can put it in the picture. Uh, the just, table get dirty. No, just give me, okay. give me the, the whole piece. The whole tray. Oh, the okay. tray, the so, tray. But you know what, on the other hand, I do hand, sign language. On the other hand, it is radio. So, okay, so. So instead of showing people, let. People, it's just some green. Let things. people imagine this yeah. instead. So we've got here, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We've got 13 little pots. 13 is my lucky number. And there's like, I put a lot of seeds in every pot. Yeah. So we have to give away a lot of tomatoes. So we already year. have quite a lot here because you've got plenty of. The, they're coming pretty tense. They are. Like dense, not tense, but dense. dense. There's a lot of tomatoes. Is this all we've planted or do we have anything in oh, the We kitchen? have more, but not, not planted yet because we didn't have the soil. Oh, yeah. the soil. So and that's why we're going, you have to put that on your shopping list yeah. today. And I wouldn't have known because I've been Corona sick. So if you planted anything, it would have been while I was delirious in yeah. bed. Okay. So I think I told you, but. Yeah, you told I me. told you a lot of things during your sickness, but you hardly heard yeah, anything. Because knew, now, when you're back to normal, you ask me about things yeah, I that did. I told you. Yeah, but I knew about the. I knew about those seeds. I knew about these seeds. Yeah. Oh, look! Look at that. Part two is done. You see, now I just. I think I just cut the yellow because it's blocked. So you've got a little, a little center in yellow. Yeah. Are you using the same center color for all? I mean, in the blanket. I did on the blanket. But not well, now. I can what see. I'm going to do now, I don't know. Maybe I start a new one. But then I don't know if I'm going to finish it because I have so many other projects. Yeah. And. Um, one of each kind, each uh, blanket is kind of enough, mm. maybe. I don't know. Okay, let's go back to our grocery list. Yes, so, groceries. Um, during when I was at my very worst, I wasn't eating very much. So I've lost about uh, six kilos of weight, which is about 12 pounds in English or in America. Uh, and now I have all these cravings for all these things that I feel <laughs> I can eat because I... I lost all the weight, so I need to kind of put it back on. I want hot dog. Yes, I'm craving a good, a wonderful hot dog. Uh, so I guess we'll be having hot dogs uh, soon. Tonight. Well, yeah, once we get shopping. Another thing that I'm craving is pizza. Yeah. I know you don't like pizza very well. No, very but... Much, but I, I, can thought, have pizza. I thought I could do it on my own. I can, I can have pizza. I can buy yeast and flour and I can make the pizza all by myself. But now like we had a lot of 
like nothing tasted because I was cooking. So I can yes. eat anything now. I managed to, I think I told that in, in one of the podcasts, I made the driest chicken in the world. Yeah. And then I made uh, this uh, Japanese, is it Japanese? The soup or, or the porridge, the yeah. congee. Well, that was the worst thing I've ever had in my whole life. But I followed all your instructions. Yeah. But the funniest thing was when Arne called the doctor uh, because he was so worried about... Yeah, because I was panicking because you didn't eat. I wasn't eating. And then Arne And said, I was like, what am I doing? I'm putting you in the hospital and give you... Arne said, I'm killing him with my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually, you said if I'm not dying of the corona, I'm going to die of your cooking. I didn't so say I that. had to call the doctor. I was like, what am I doing wrong? I, have to, I need help. Yeah. Anyway, the doctor recommended soups. So and, I made soups. And then Austria and Aldous, our friends, they got us all these different soups that are already made. And you just heat them. And then Arne See, put cream on them. Now I'm doing something to... wrong because I can't talk and listen to you. And do... No, I uh, didn't do the wrong thing. No, you see, just keep going. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so Arne, Arne got, well, Audria and, uh, uh, sorry, Austria and Audria, they went and they got us all these ready-made soups. And then Arne put cream in them to kind of try to fatten me up. Uh, and, and actually that was okay. Once this, he started feeding me those ready-made soups, it was okay. But his congee was, uh, it was absolutely horrific. It was so bad, you said. I, I liked it, but I put like a whole piece of that, I s uh, the, uh, the onion. Garlic. Gre garlic. The I said a little bit of garlic and Arne put, found the biggest garlic in the world and put it in. It, it was just bad. It was just... Playing bad, but I appreciate the effort. So you see, I'm not cooking anymore. No, no. Well, well you were. I'm so over cooking. You were so good at reheating all the soups that I know. they brought us. And then they made us chicken soup. We actually had chicken soup with chicken. That was great. So good. Uh, Austria made it for us and hand delivered it here uh, without coming into the house, obviously. But yeah, Arnest cooking is not uh, going in in the history. Books as <laughs> That's the best cooking as in the, the best world. Cooking in the world. But then I did something really amazing. What did you do? Or I think it was so fun, and I think it was. We, it, I was, I was cleaning the lamp in the hall. Oh yeah, the crystal chandelier. The crystal from. We have this old crystal chandelier from Carlos family because yes. he grew up in a furnished home, so they had crystal lamps. Well, you didn't have furniture. Well, we had furniture, but we didn't have crystal lamps. Uh, oh, oh well, actually, we had one. Yeah, you see? A fake one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, it has, I think it have had, we haven't watched it for like 20 years or something. Probably, yeah. It was gray. So, I had to take down all the chains, and I washed them, and I put them back. And the crystals. The crystals, and... You know, it's so beautiful. And the nice thing about it now is that when the sun comes in through the window, you get the reflection of the crystal in the in the ceiling and on the floor. And now you actually now you get it because it's clean. Yeah, I think it was a good thing of you to do, Arne. Yeah. yeah. Wonder what they do like, what they did in the old days. Did they have people? I think my to my grandmother had some people to clean that for her. Because it is a lot of work. Can you imagine if you have a lot of these lamps? That must be a nightmare. No, she would have had some staff that did those things for her. Uh, when my parents inherited the, some of her furniture, though, they didn't have anyone to do it. I doubt my mother ever cleaned it. And, I don't uh, know. Maybe but it's a lot of work. Maybe we cleaned it once 20 years ago and that's it. Maybe we cleaned it when we put it up the first time. So mm -hmm. that is probably around 20 years. Yeah. So that, that was like very... Um, I can't find a word. It was... Um, fulfilling. Fulfilling. Was yeah. that in Norwegian? Suddenly I couldn't remember that oh, either. Uh, and now I don't remember it in Norwegian. But it was, it, you know, something that makes you feel good. Var veldig, veldig... Tilfredsstillende. There yeah. you go. Ex yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I haven't been much help here because of my post... Well, <laughs> first because of the coronavirus, now because I have post-viral syndrome. Another thing Arne has done is cleared the entire terrace and yeah. brought out the sofas. So. Because we still have a little bit of snow, or a little bit. We have like 30 centimeters, but it's sl slush. 
Yeah. I tried to walk on the snow this morning, but I was falling through it. Yeah. And now so, we've got the sofas out so that once uh, the sun really comes out, which it will do in the weekend, we can sit outdoors. Yeah. And that's why we crochet these all our blankets in wool. If you come from a warmer climate, you could do them in cotton. But we do them in wool because we tend to use these crocheted blankets outdoors in the summers, you know, when it gets, when the sun goes down at 11 o'clock in the evening. If it's still a beautiful evening, we will just use the blankets to cover ourselves. Because that's kind of, it's, it's, if it's been a warm day, it's getting quite chilly in the evening. So it's it does, always yes. nice to... Oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm like out of... Um, out of tune or touch? Out of touch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good for people to see that I do. Mistakes. I have to do it over again sometimes. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we use a lot of these blankets outdoors in the summer. Not when it's sunny, but when the sun goes down. And so they're great to have in merino. Uh, they last uh, long. They have a little bit of... When they're done in merino, they have a fluff to them. Don't, don't you agree, Arne? Mm -hmm. They're fluffier. Yeah, they're and, lighter also. Yeah, but when you do them in cotton, they're more... They're not as fluffy. They're more flat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think I would do it in cotton. Then, then it looks more like a tablecloth. Yeah. For me. Yeah. But, of course, if people want to do it in cotton, they can do it in cotton. So, we yeah. are not coming and checking. No, absolutely not. So, so anyway, those uh, blankets will be draped over our outdoor sofas when it's not raining and then used in the evenings as a shawl or a, mm. a, co a co cozy blanket if you, if you want to lie down on the sofa and have a nap. Uh, and it's not as hot. Outside. And I think then when spring is coming, it's always nice to start crocheting again. Because I agree. knitting for me, that's I do most of the knitting in the winter. Mm -hmm. I do knitting in the summer also, but the winter time is more knitting time. And when it gets warmer outside, I tend to go over to crocheting, to yeah. change into crocheting or I also try to do some embroidery every night in between all the other things, but mm, yeah. But crocheting in the in the summer is nice. And yeah, and it's a sure sign of spring when we bring out our crochet stuff and start making flowers, which is our favorite crochet motif. Is the flower? It's always fun to try to come up with new flowers. Mm -hmm. So once we start doing that, you know that spring has arrived. This year we're doing a few other extra special things like sowing a lot of seeds. Because we're here, uh, we're not going anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, and it gives us. It really has given us the opportunity to uh, to do a little bit of that. We're going to be working on our garden uh, as soon this as, summer, as yeah. we won't be traveling. There's no possibility to travel. I think the holiday this year will be in Norway. We will probably go. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about going to Lofoten in our bug. That will be needle. so cool. But but then we heard on the radio that everybody else is talking about going to Lofoten. This is the year the Norwegians are going to cross their Norwegian bucket list things. And Lofoten, the islands uh, north of the Arctic Circle near Bulda, is one of the things a lot of people want to do, us included. We've been there before, but we want to go by car. So cool to go with the Beatles. I think that will be so cool. And you know what, Carlos? We should book a place, places to stay now. If not, we have to bring our tent. Yeah. I know you hate camping, but I have a tent yeah. somewhere. We'll see. Just have I to mean, find I don't it. want to do any cancel. I don't want to do any bookings where there are no possibilities to cancel. So if we're going to book something, it has to be a cancelable reservation so that we can cancel it in case things don't improve mm -hmm. by say June, July. But you know what happened to me the, the month we've been in quarantine? What I have this. Really, this urge, or what you call it, to go to Italy. I know. I, mean I don't too. know why Italy, but because I have like to. That's I have why. felt like I just really want to go to Italy. I want to go to Venice. Venice. Venice, and I can't. Yeah, I want to go to Naples and to the Amalfi. But why? Coast. Why do we both go and around and think about Italy? Because you want what you can't have, and right now Italy is completely out of our reach. <laughs> yeah. So, so life is hard. Life is very hard right now. So but let's go to Lofoten. Let's go to Lofoten if we can, if they allow us. We'll see in June, July what happens. But yeah, our garden, we, we were working a lot with our studio uh, last year. We had to dig, dig up half the garden between the two, the main house and the studio. 
to put some cables and some uh, pipes down there. So we are mm. going to uh, have to do some garden work this year. So, and yeah. I have been talking to Arne a long time about wanting to have a little bit of grass. Right now we have, we have stone. Uh, we have the stone garden, which is all stone. And we don't have any grass. And I want to have grass between the two houses. Arne has been very much against the idea because he hates cutting the grass. But you know, it's gonna be a small patch of grass. And then and you we need can get a, a robot. Yeah, you need a it. robot because I'm not cutting it. And those robots are not very expensive, uh, actually. I was looking at the prices, they're reasonable. Yeah. So a tiny little robot that can cut the grass twice a week automatically, and then it just goes back in and charges. This is what I think we should do. So I made the first flower. Can you find me the the needles? The tapestry needle? Yeah, I can. S oh, wow, look at that. Ends. What a pretty little flower. And this combination is not in the blanket. I think I said that before. Yeah, you had 18, you said that you had 18 different. So I can do 17 more on this and then suddenly we have a new blanket mm -hmm. or a new UFO. It's not very typical of you to do a blanket where you're actually coordinating it. This one... No, but I had a lot of not coordinating things. So I felt for yeah. doing it. I remember when we were doing this blanket because I was also crocheting flowers and then I remember tying them 18. Yeah. Once once we had 18, we tied them together with some thread to keep them together. That's a long time ago. That's a very long time We've ago. We've been working on this for a long time. Yeah, yeah, but I remember doing that. Suddenly we had stacks of 18 and 18 and 18 and 18 flowers and so on. And they were all stacked, you know, um, by color. Uh, and then you, I, and then I remember you and I putting them all on the floor mm -hmm. to find out the correct way to put them together. To put them together, and yeah, this is probably the first and only blanket that we have that is completely coordinated from beginning to the end, and also where the the colors of the yarn have been purchased. We've mm. purchased these, and we've purchased them um, in a way as we wanted the yeah, because to be. All, all the other blankets we made, I th I think all the others, or is... They're all random. I think they are random, or is the um, Hedvig, is there like... Random. No, it's random. Random. So, yeah. So anyway. But for this one, we made a chart so you can see how which color combinations we used in our flowers, if yes. you want to have it exactly like we do, but... I think most people can't because this is a good project for leftover, leftover yarn. yarns. Yeah. Even if it's the, if there's 18 flowers in in Which one colorway? color, you get enough for one yeah. flower from one ball. But we decided in the pattern to be very generous so that we have actually not only specified the colors, but also shown you what each flower looks like. And then uh, also... Uh, Shown you, yeah, made up the chart to show you how to put the, and you know why? the flowers together. Why? Because there's not much to do when you're locked in your house for a while. Well, yeah, but so. you did this before. Well, I, that, that was before. No, yeah, I was, was working on the drawing. No, because we had planned to, to do this podcast during Easter. Well, that's true. And Easter, we were supposed to be in Queensland, Queensland in Australia. That's, oh, I did it before. And okay. we weren't, we were here. So uh, you did it before we went on the Coastal Express. Uh, and now we have to put the pattern on our, on our web shop so that people can, if they want to purchase it, they can. And they can start making this amazing throw, which is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, which I think people will, uh, will enjoy quite a lot. Uh, it's a nice yeah. blanket. So I'm, f I'm finished now. You, you can say... No, no, I mean, let's do, we can talk a little bit more, but uh, today it's only just the one flower, I think. I'm not doing more oh, than one right not now. Not doing more than one. So let's see what the flower the looks flower. like. The flower. Very, very pretty. It's a primrose, isn't it? I don't know what, it's, what it is. It's a flower. Yeah. I, and now I, I think I have to put this in a place so I can find it again, because yeah. maybe I should finish it. So in, uh, so in an ideal world where everything is color coordinated, you have one in that colorway, yeah. and now you need 17 more. 17 more of this. Before you start a new colorway. And then it will look like this one in the end. Let's see if you just stretch it out on but the table a little bit. colorway. 
So I love the joining of this because it gives you those little stitches. I like, like stitches. these openings. Yeah, those little holes around the flowers are very, very, very uh, cool. And uh, yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. And as always, as always, if you don't, you know, if you want to crochet the flowers, uh, you can do different things. You don't have to make a gigantic blanket. You can, one flower, you can applique it onto a knitted hat mm -hmm. and you have a little decoration, right? Or you could do On a little pin. brooch. Uh, or if you do, you could do a, a scarf. So you can do a scarf. How many flowers wide? Like uh, four flowers wide, maybe four wide, and then you can have as many as you like for the length. Like four. That's this is a good size. Yeah. Two, one, two, three, four. We can go this way. Yeah. So there's tons, oh. tons of different things you can do with a project like this. Uh, I am uh, gonna be wearing this uh, around me, wrap myself, <laughs> wrap your... use it a little bit as a shawl, uh, as you saw maybe on the photos that we just uploaded on Instagram and and Facebook. Uh, I'll be wearing this because it is very comfy and cozy, and I feel you know I feel with my post viral syndrome, I still feel I need to be protected from the world. Yeah, and putting this on and and kind of closing it, in, closing myself. Inside the blanket makes me feel like I am wearing armor, which is great. That sounds like I start a new one. You start a new flower? Huh? Okay, so you start a new flower. Um, I hoped, I was hoping that the podcast would be uh, at least half an hour, and I was a little bit concerned about whether I would be able to, um, to be uh, at, focused. But you all times. made it. I made it. Yeah. This is my first, uh, my first podcast uh, since we, um, since I got the coronavirus, and I'm very, very happy to be back. Um, and I want to thank everybody. We've been receiving uh, wonderful wishes uh, of a speedy recovery from so many people that have been commenting. Uh, Arne, you put up an update on my health a week ago. A lot of people have been uh, commenting on that. And I've been receiving a lot of lovely emails from people who have been so kind and understanding that this would take a long time. So mm -hmm. I just want to thank everybody for your sweetness and kindness. Thank you so much for uh, supporting me in a very difficult time. And um, if I continue feeling well like this, um, we will start uh, the Arne and Carnos Quarantine Knitting Podcast again. On Wednesday? On Wednesday, April 22, 2020. We're going to finalize uh, the patches. We're going to show you how to sew them together. Uh, there may be new patches. I don't know. Arne was feeling very... I was so inspired, so I made a lot of patches. So we'll be offering more patches uh, for maybe a third pillow or if you no. want to do a blanket. I changed my mind. I want to make a blanket. Okay. I put them together like as a pillow, but I'm going to work more yeah. around the pillow and I'm going to make a blanket. So we're going to be finalizing the quarantine podcast, meaning that we will have episodes Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. And then the week after we will have Monday through Friday and then we'll see how it goes from there. Uh, so we are definitely coming back and as we promised to uh, fulfill and make um, Finish the, the project. So and, we're back and we're bad. And we know that a lot of people are still in quarantine, whether they've had the virus, whether they're in a high risk group uh, or whether they're just on regular do lockdown. I know that mm -hmm. America is still suffering. But I think that's badly. different all over the world. It is. So. But I, I think that people will be home and they will appreciate this. So we're very, very happy that we are able to be back. Now, if you want the pattern for this blanket, you can purchase it on our blog. Uh, or sorry, our web shop. Go to arnecarlos.com and select shop from the menu or click on the link in profile if you're on Instagram and mm -hmm. it will take you straight to our web shop. Uh, and then you can just start uh, doing your new blanket. I think that most people who did Hedvig uh, last year, they're waiting for Astrid, which is the name of this blanket. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of, a lot of people are going to be uh, starting this project. And if you do, please tag Tag us on uh, Facebook or on Instagram as we'd love to see the progress as you make the flowers. And your color combinations. Yeah. So we'd like to thank everybody uh, for uh, tuning in and listening to us on our first po podcast after the coronavirus. We look forward to next week uh, seeing you again. Yes. Thank you so much for watching and Arne. 
And you have to say the things you No, because we said it in the beginning. In the oh, period. we did? Yeah, we did. Okay, it's said already. So. Yeah. so all we have to do is thank everybody for, uh, well, for their kindness as I already did. Yeah, so thank you for watching and having patience with us. And but now we're back soon. And we'll see you again. See you again. So, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> That's nice. Bye. Yeah, shaky, shaky. Shaky, shaky. Bye. Oh, we can't touch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we can. Well, we're immune now, yeah. so we can do we're anything. We're immune. Bye. Bye.